Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to show how can we set up the Ethernet IP communication between the Zebra CT510, this industry printer, and Rockwell Allen Brownlee Compact Logix Controller PLC. Also, we will send the code from the PLC, allows this uh, CT510, this printer, print a barcode. And this barcode is shown in the screen. And this barcode has a digital number and a static word. And this is a digital number sent from the PLC. And this is a very common used application in the industry. Using the PLC, send the code, and using the industry printer to print this code. Then we will use the barcode reader to scan the part. This is very common used devices and equipment in the assembling sales and assembling line. Basically, when the part is going to ship to the cell, so we will use the printer printer code. And when the part shift to the cell, assembling cell, we will scan this code and register every data according to this part. And the motivation to do this printer that recently I did a project, I was going to use this ZT510. And this is the first time I use this uh, printer. And when I try to learn how to use this printer, I found there are rich information from Zebra website. However, because the information is too rich, so it's hard to sort which kind of useful information for you. And especially, we want to set up the communication between the PLC and this printer. And we want to find the essential manual, the essential the barcode designer software, and the EDS file, and how can we set up the communication? How can we find the Ethernet IP mapping list allows the PLC send the code to this printer? To learn this uh, CT510 and set up this communication, basically I took uh, two days. After I finished this uh, entire test, and I realized the whole process shouldn't be too long. The reason why I took two days, that's because the information is so rich, you don't know which software go first, and which file is uh, most important for you to set up your application. So that is my motivation to make this video, to set up the PLC and this printer communication, which kind of software that is uh, important, that is essential, and which one we install first, and which one we install after. As shown in the screen, to allow the PLC send the code to the printer, and the printer print the barcode, as shown in the screen, like this style. Basically, to set up this uh, ZT510, this printer, and uh, the PLC communication. Firstly, you need to guarantee when you purchase this uh, ZT510, this uh, printer, you need to purchase the firmware with the Ethernet IP communication. And when you get this uh, ZT510, your distributor, your wonder will send you one firmware. And after this, you need to download one Z downloader, that software, to download that firmware to this printer enable this printer to communicate Ethernet IP. And other than that, we do not need to purchase any additional software. To allow the PLC send and print successfully for this code, for example, so you need to install that Zebra designer, the essential, this is for free, this software. And also you can purchase one software that Zebra designer professional. But for general purpose, so this essential for free software that's enough for you, especially to print this simple style. And after that, you need to install the Zebra driver software allows your laptop, your Windows system can config this printer. For example, config the color, config the size to calibrate the printer. And the last, to allow the PLC to communicate with the, the Zebra. So we need to install the EDS file. Then we need to go to find this website, the Network Connect Printer software, and download the Zebra Network Connect that software. And actually, in that software, one essential file that is the EDS file. Also, we can download the manual from this website. I will explain this detail after. Let's do a quick summary. Firstly, we need to download the firmware and then download this Zebra Designer and then install the designer version 8 driver and set up utilities, and then install this uh, network software. All right, let's start from the scratch. Let me show how can we implement this step by step. Firstly, let's find out this website and this hierarchy, uh, barcode printer software, uh, Zebra Link environment barcode printer software, 
and download this Zebra Designer Essential. This Essential version that is for free. Also, you can purchase for the professional version. And this software is the same. So when you use this Essential and install that, you can shift to the professional and use it for 30 days. And after the 30 days, you can purchase the professional version. In most of the cases, the Essential this version is enough for us. So let's download this. Okay, after I download this Zebra Designer version 3, so let's install that. Okay, to check out the detail, so we can look at the detail information from this link. So Zebra Designer Essential and Professional. Okay, we installed this designer successfully. Let's double click and open it. So here, let me explain. So as shown in the screen, this picture, this barcode was designed by this Zebra Designer. People might ask why we need to install this Zebra Designer, this software. That's because, for example, from this code, we do need this frame, for example, and the static test. And maybe the barcode, we need a longer, a higher, or shorter, or narrow. We can use the PLC to send the ZPL code to control the printer, but that is really hard. So the beauty of this designer software allows this software to create this template. The only change area that is this data, this number. And this barcode is controlled by an internal code that is one FD from the ZPL code. And the FD code uses this data to convert to the barcode. And from the PLC wheel, the only change we need to send from the PLC to the printer, that is this data. The key idea is once the printer uses this template, the only things the printer need to get, that is this code number here. And once the PLC send this number, this string, so the printer can use this uh, template, generate the barcode automatically and uh, print it out. This is why we need to use this uh, Zebra designer that makes our setup much easier. And after we install this, and we can see the next step, we will install the printer drivers, allows this Zebra designer connect to our printer, allows this designer know which kind of printer we are using, which kind of template we can connect to the printer. Then let's click this download printer driver. And then it will send us to this website, Zebra, this is support download. Okay, to find out the printer information, let's click this printer. For example, I'm using the ZT510. So we can type in the ZT510, this printer. Or you can find out others. Actually, to set up the Ethernet IP communication between the printer and the PLC, lot of type from the Zebra, they all fit. And this is the main page of this ZT510 industry printer. And if you scroll down, you will find to set up the communication from PLC to this printer, it's really hard to find the direct information from this website. However, from here, after you click this uh, get support, so we will go to the how to videos and the menus and the drivers. That shift to this website, the printer support. And this is the how to videos. This how to videos shows the basic operation. For example, how to set up the tags, how to set up the collaboration, how to set up the sensor. Okay, that's all fine. And more importantly, we need to find out the drivers. The key two drivers we need to install or highly recommend to install. One is this Zebra setup utilities for Windows. One is this Z Design version 8 driver for Windows. Let's install both of them. Okay, let's go back here and let's close this uh, Zebra Designer and install those two drivers. All right, this done. Okay, this allows us to install the printer. This step is used to config designer this software to connect our printer. Basically, we have two ways. One way is use the Ethernet connect to the printer, or we can use the USB, that cable. So in this case, I'm going to use this network port. And if this software cannot find your printer, you can click this menu. And you can select the printer 
you have. For example, in my case, I'm going to find the ZT510 and then select next. And since I can now find the LAN port from this list, so we can click this uh, create a new network port. So click next. Here we can type in the IP address. For example, we can type in my printer IP address. For example, 1.129. This is my printer IP address. Okay, click next. And here you can type in more information. Okay, and click this install. And at here, this printer name, personally, I also recommend we use the same name. For example, for example, we use the LAN port. Okay. And if you are going to use a USB, you can create a USB underscore this. Okay, so we installed successfully. Let's click the exist. And now if I search this printer list, so we can see it installed this line Z designer, this printer driver. Okay. And other than that, we can also install this. This is the Zebra Setup Utilities. Okay, we completed this installation. So let me click this Run Zebra Setup Utilities now. And let's check out. Okay, that is this Zebra Setup Utilities. Firstly, this is a printer you can connect to the printer. This six button allows you to configure the printer. So for example, let's quickly review this side, uh, the label size. And this is download the fonts and the graphics and config the printer qualities. So this is like a wizard. So allows you to easily set up the printer. Open printer tools and config the printer connectivities. So this allows you to set up if you are using the wired or wireless or Bluetooth to connect the printer. And this is unique, open communication with the printer. So here, that actually you can send direct the GPL code to the printer. This code allows the printer print the different barcode or different format. Actually, when we use the format, that Zebra designer, that designer template background, that template background will create one ZPL file. So that make your life easier. That create that ZPL code already. Okay. Okay, I will close it. From the previous step, when we install the driver, LAN, Z designer, so we can also click this uh, manager. And at here, you can click this uh, printer test page, or you can click this uh, printer properties. And this properties, that's a similar idea as other printers. So we can set up the qualities, we can set up the color, so we can set up the IP address, we can maintain this calibrated materials, or we can calibrate the media, or we can print some test label here. Or we can send the command directly, like the GPL code, okay? And this uh, setup utility, so when you double click, that allows you to config more details like here we just shown, okay? And then let's install this Network Connect Printer add-on profile. So to find out this Network Connect Printer software, so let's find out this barcode printer software, Link OS, Network Connect Printer software. So this uh, Link OS, that is a system name for this printer. And the firmware we talked of at the beginning to allow the printer to communicate with the PLC using the Ethernet IP. That's the Link OS with the Ethernet IP communication ability. Okay, to download this Network Connect, let's hit this, Download Network Connect. From this page, it will also cause you a little bit confused because it has a couple items here. Print Connect, Test Connect, Browse Printer, Network Connect. Actually, the essential software for us, that is this, Network Connect. Firstly, let's download this printer add-on profile network connect. That is very important. To get this EDS file, we need to download this software and install that. 
Okay, let's download this. This file looks very big, but actually in essential file, that is an EDS file, very small. But we still need to install that. Also, one important, that is this, download Network Connect Developer Guide. That is 140 page PDF menu. Okay, that is this file, Developer Guide. So in this menu, it introduced how can we use this EDS file. Also, it introduced the detailed definition within the mapping list. It's very important. However, one thing it lost, that is uh, how we can get this uh, ZPL formats. So to get this uh, ZPL formats, that actually come from the Zebra Designer, the software, the first software we install. So the software will generate that ZPL format. And then after we complete that format, we can send the data to the printer and the printer will join the data and uh, the format together, print the label. That is the key idea. If we scroll down, you will find this here, this code e EIP CPL. This code will allow the PLC tell the printer which CPL format this printer need to use. The file name stored in the printer, that is the EIP. It named EIP. You can name another name for this file. You can send a different name for that ZPL file, uh, allows the printer use a different format. But to allow the PLC use the different PLC data, we need to find out which area, which field we need to send. That depends on the detail address name within that ZPL file. I will show this after. So you need to figure out for sending the one, two, three, four, five, this data, which kind of address you need to use. So this menu only is not enough. We need to combine the Zebra Designer, this software and this menu together to figure out this data transfer. Okay, so I download this Network Connector Printer add-on profile. And personally, I recommend when you install this software, you better install this software together with your Allen Branley RS Logic 5000 software together in one Windows system. So, for example, my current Windows system, I install the RS Logic 5000 software. After we install that add on file, so when you try to set up the Ethernet communication using the compact logics or control logics, you will find when you try to add one device within this network, when you search the zero or search this link underscore OS underscore printer, you will find this zero EDS file already installed in your system. All right, after we install those essential software, and then we have two essential steps. One is we are going to use this Zebra Designer design the format for this barcode, design this frame, the barcode, and there's a static text. And then we will shift to the Alan Branley and we will set up the Ethernet communication and I will show the mapping. And also I will show how can we send the data through the PLC to this barcode, allow the printer print this barcode. Let's shift to the Zebra Designer. Okay, let's go to the Zebra Designer. Okay, I'm using Zebra Designer in Essentials. This is the Essential version, they are for free. If this is the first time you are going to use this uh, designer, you can click this uh, sample files, and there are a couple template files you can use. For example, if we click this uh, label objects, this template was designed using ZT420. So I'm gonna shift to my side, uh, that is a uh, ZT510. Okay, so we can see this is one template you can use. This is just a quick demonstration. I'm going to set up one simple EIP file, that template. So let's create a new label. Okay, here you can select according to your printer. Okay, and when you click this printer properties, actually it's shipped to the printer utilities here like we shown before. So at here, you can set up the width, height, according to the labels you have. And keep in mind, before you set up this, try to use the calibration and adjust the sensor within the printer. You need to guarantee the printer you use that aligned with the actual size. Okay, click the next. Select, you are going to use one row style or sheet style, okay? 
and select this uh, layout. So this software is very easy to use. This style is like Office, Word, or Excel. Okay, here allows you to set up your label dimension. Okay, like my case, my sticker style, that is a peel off style, is a small label. My size, the length, that is a 1.5, and the height, that is a 0.9 inch. So here I'm going to set this width, that is a 1.5 inch and height that is a 0 0.9 okay. okay here this is my label size and the paper side okay and this is your actual label that sticker so this is the size the 1.5 and height that is a 0 0.9 inch let's go to design this a format for example firstly i'm going to print one frame here and we can adjust the size and then let's put a barcode temporarily put here double click so we can config by default this label that is one fixed data you can see this so this fixed data if we type in the different uh, data once we hit the enter it will generate this barcode according to this data and in our case, the data that will come from the PLC. So we will select this variable keyboard input. So that allows this data can be dynamic. Okay, you can still put an initial data for a test. For example, in my case, I'm going to print one 12 bit this data. For example, my data that is a 12 digit. Okay. And also we can check out this value required. So to allow us to type in the data and this prompt text, that is one label name. For example, I name it code, okay? And let's go to this advanced properties. And at here, you can limit this length. For example, your total length could be 12 or your actual case. So you can fix this length, depends on your actual application and this output rule so you can add this uh, prefix and uh, suffix this special characters here okay and you can adjust the size of this code okay after this we can also put a fixed text here so basically give this label a name uh, for example, let me shrink this first, shrink it smaller first, and we can drag this text here, and I can name it, give a name, go to the source. This text also can come from the variable keyboard input that can control by PLC. And to demonstrate, I'm going to set a fixed data here only so that we can name it and we can adjust the size. For example, we can make this static task smaller or you can adjust the front at here. For example, like this. And if your actual tag has a little bit of margin here from this document properties, we can set the margin size. For example, you can go to the label dimensions and decide the margins and decide the label dimensions. Probably at the beginning, you can print a couple labels and see if the actual this uh, number and your actual pattern is uh, sitting in the center of the tag. For example, in my case, I can set this margin uh, on the top a little bit of value. For example, I'm going to set 0 0.2 so we can see the actual looks like. So it will leave a little bit margin here and we can adjust this positions. Okay, next thing is very important to allow this format to transfer to the printer. So let's click this uh, document properties first. So firstly, we need to guarantee we select the correct printer. Okay. And then let's check out this use store recall printer mode. The important name that is this recall. That means when the PLC communicate with this printer, it send the code, send the command, and this printer will recall 
this format using the data coming from the PLC and join this uh, format together, record this format and print the label. So we need to check out this. Also, we need to click this uh, internal flash. That file, this uh, CPL file will stored inside the printer. So we need to check out this. And let's double check the label dimension. And let's double check the paper setting. Store style info. Okay, click OK. Okay, till here, let's save this file. So let me browse and save this file. Okay, I'm going to name this label format EIP. Okay, so this project named the EIP. Okay, after save, let's click this print. And firstly, let's go to the store. Okay, go to store and this is the test data. So when we type in the different data, for example, And once we type in this uh, text data, this is just for test. So it will generate, basically give us a preview. It will show what the actual label looks like. Make sure this internal flash will be selected. Other than that, check out this speed and the darkness. That darkness will control the ink darkness. Okay. And also you can click this printer setting. And this setting also allows you to double check some important setting for the printer, for example, especially for this, the type, uh, maybe you need to tear off the label or you need to peel off your label so you can select according to your case, okay? For example, my case is a peel off. This printer will automatically peel off this uh, label. It's very easy to take it off. And after this, click this uh, store to printer. And this store to printer allows this EIP, this format file transfer to the printer. And after this transfer successfully, it won't show anything, but the file stored in the printer is named EIP.CPL. The actual file in the printer, that's the ZPL file, is named EIP.CPL. After you check this printer to file, so click this store to printer, it won't transfer the file to the printer. However, it will ask you to save one project. This project, that is the, the PRN file. So let's save. And then let's open this folder. And after we check this uh, print to file, it will generate this PRN file. This PRN file will allow us to check what the actual address from the PLC we need to send. For example, let's right click, use the notepad, open with, use the notepad. So you will see here, that is the actual ZPL format, the command. And more importantly, this, this iPhone 1, that is the address the PLC need to send. When you send the data, for example, when we use the PLC to send this 12 digit data, so we need to send this address first and the following data, that is this 12 digit data. This format, we need to open this file, look at what the actual format, what the actual address will be. Sometimes this address will be iPhone 11. Sometimes that is the iPhone 1. So basically this PRN, this file allows you to double check the actual iPhone address we need to send. We check the actual iPhone address. And to quickly check what the actual print it looks like, so we can go to the print. And here, when we click this print, so the printer will use this uh, test data, this test code. So the printer will actual print one label directly without using the PLC. This allows us to quickly print a couple labels. For example, at the beginning, maybe customer will ask you to send them some sample label. So without setting up the PLC, so you can still use this uh, test data and click this print. Printer can still use this format to print the data, to print the labels. Okay, so when we set up this document properties, keep in mind, we need to check out this, use store recall printer mode. 
select this internal flash. And then let's shift to the Alan Bradley side. Okay, that is a Rockwell Alan Bradley PLC software. So my current controller, this is a compact logic. From this compact logic Ethernet, let's create add a new module and add that printer device. So we can search that zebra. And it named Link OS Printer. Let's click this create. Okay, here, let me name this uh, printer. Okay, and IP address. So let's type in the IP address. And if we click this uh, change, the module definition, so we can see, because this EDS file come from the Zebra directly, it's not the generic file, so the internal format already fixed inside, okay? And we can also look at this, this RPI, the minimum time, this is 100. This communication between the printer and the PLC is really slow. So keep in mind this, if you are using this response coming from the printer, you need to very carefully about this. This cycle time is very slow, okay? So after we add this printer, so we go to the controller tags. So we can see this is a Zebra label printer input. The data come from the printer. And this O, this is the output from the PLC sent to the printer. And this field one, that is the iPhone number we just shown in that PRN file. It has a field one, two, three, four, five. And in case that PRN file inside shows iPhone 11, 12, 13. So we will use this raw data area here. So all the data we need to send to the printer that is ASIC, this format. So the detailed explanation, highly recommend you find the description from the menu, from this menu, Network Connect for Automation, Developer Guide from the Zebra. For example, if we go to the printer input and output, this assembly explained what that means from this field one, two, three, four, five. So it means iPhone one, two, three, four, five, like this. Okay. And this is the input and output from the PLC to the printer especially the trigger, so we can find the detailed information here. And more importantly, how to trigger that printer here it explained. So from this output area, we need to add one on this uh, sequence number. And every time when we need to trigger the printer, we need to add one to this sequence number. And also this format number, uh, this is a second format number, this mapping list, this format number also need to send one. Okay, and a couple of examples from this menu after, so you can check out the detail. And if we shift back here, for example, from this output area, so this format number, we need to send to one, okay? And this sequence number, for example, if current sequence number is 10, when we go to trigger the printer, we need to add one. Once we type in 11, so this trigger command will send to the printer. And for the next print command, we just need to add one. Once this number got a change, add one. So it will send the trigger to the printer, okay? And this format name, that actually store the actual format locations. This will tell the printer which format file this printer will go to use. For example, in our case, we are using the eip.zpl file. From here, we can manually type in here. Let's double click. Keep in mind, we will start from the number two, leave zero and one as a new value, zero, zero here. And keep in mind, that is the ASIC zero, not integer zero. Okay, we start from the number two. So from here, that is uh, the E. And it named E I P. Okay. 
So when the file transfers to the printer, it internally automatically names this a CPL file. Okay, we need to follow this format. And once we change this sequence number at one, it will send the data to the printer. And the actual data we need to send, that locates at this XF field one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And according to the file, when we click this print to file, so when we generate this PRN file, and when we use this notepad, open it, and check out the inside FN address, and as we found, the actual code is stored that come from the FN1. So we will use this FN1 address. And because the format is using FN1, so we will use this XF underscore field one to send the data. And we will start from this number two. And the actual code we will send, for example, if we send one, two, three, four, five, uh, we will send one, two, we start from the index two and send the actual code at here. So this will controlled by your PLC program here. And this is the field one. And by some cases, if in case you generate a file, when you open this PRN file and you find the actual code is using FN11, it greater than five. And this is a CPL language. And this FN11, that is the address. FD means field data, it defines the barcode and this is the actual data that directly sent from the PLC to the printer. It could be empty here. It's just an example at here. And keep in mind here, because of we are using the iPhone 11 here, so we have to use the raw data area to send the code. And we have to send the entire line from the left to the right, the entire format from the PLC to the printer. If this address generate iPhone 1, so actually this format already within that EDS file. But if that address greater than six, actually that start from the 11. So like this case, so we need to send this entire format using the PLC. Let me show how can we do that. So if your iPhone address greater than the six, like this case, we are going to use iPhone 11. So we need to guarantee firstly, this field one to five equal to R6 zero. Then we will use this raw data field. So firstly, let me clear this field one. So we will return this field one for testing well. So let's return the field one to five to ASIC zero. We will use this raw data area. Okay. And this raw data area, we will follow the entire format. And the entire format, we will start from the two also. And the entire format, we will start from this. Okay. And follow that entire format, FN, F, next one, that is a FN, So if we are going to use 11, so the 11 will be input like this way. And this is FD. FD means we will generate the barcode. And after the FD, that is the actual data. For example, we type in the data one, two, three, four. Uh, I assume we are going to send the one, two, three, four. This is four digit to that barcode. And after the data, we still need a format. So this tail, that is the FS. So from this number two to here, this is the entire format we need to send in case you are using the FN 11 or 12 or 13. So keep in mind, you need to follow this format. So that is the importance of that PRN file. Using that PRN file, you can check out what the actual address is using. So you need to use that PRN file using the notepad, open it, and check out the actual iPhone address that generated from that designer software. And once you figure out this address and using this different way to send the data to the printer. All right, let's see this online test. So currently this input sequence number that equal to 48. That means the current sequence number in the printer that is 48. It's waiting for we add one to trigger this printer. And the format number is equal to one. From this output area, current sequence number is equal to 48. Once we add one, for example, 49, it will trigger the printer. 
And because our current code, we are using the F1 11, so the current field 1 to 5, they are empty, they are equal to ASIC 0. And we are typing the raw data at F1 11. So we need to input the entire format. So we start from the head, F1 11, head, FD, and the entire date number. The code data, they are 12 digit data. So we have a 12 digits data and head FS is at the end. All right, once I change this to 48 to 49, it will trigger and print this code. And let's see what that code looks like. After this print, as we can see this label, it start from 07 and end at 03, this label, it printed successfully. All right, let's do a quick review. We start from this Zebra designer, design this uh, label format. And after this, we transfer this uh, format to the printer. And when we use the PLC, send the data to the printer, we send the data, that is a 12 digit data. And using this format joined together, we print the barcode. Okay, that is for today's topic. So we set up the barcode format and set up the Ethernet communication between the printer and uh, Alan Brownlee controller. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.